this bouncing ball animation and I want to um, make it so it will uh, render out. So I'm going to show you how to do a batch render. In order to do this, let's go to our rendering tab. And I've, what I've got here is just a little bouncing ball animation. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go render and render settings. Now from here, we're going to start changing a lot of things in here. Um, I'm going to add some lighting just to give it a little bit of um, shadow and things like that. And then from here, what we need to do, we need to go under the common tab and we need to change a lot of this stuff. So you can render it out as a JPEG sequence, that's fine for this. Um, if you want to keep a transparent background as, the, as anything like this gray area, and you want that rendered out as like sort of an alpha, you can render it out as PNG so you have the transparent background. Now, I'm going to just stick with JPEG for this. Um, name dot extension single frame, so that's just for a single frame render. Name number dot extension is the one we want. Frame padding, generally, you'll notice up here it, re, it changes some of these numbers. I'm just going to go to five, just it's better to have the extra numbers than not to because what will happen is if you don't it'll go out of order so it'll be like 1, 10 and then 2, 20 or whatever. however it renumbers it in um, the, the finder or the Windows Explorer so it's important to have enough frame padding here and it's what that means is just extra zeros before the number so this would be frame 1, frame 10 so I'm doing a 20 frame render and what we're doing with that is, uh, this is all fine, but just to give you an idea, if you were to um, change it HD 720 to get a 1280 by 720 aspect, uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you can change these settings as well, uh, which camera you're going to render from, uh, alpha channel and things like that. And um, for the most part, the only things we need to uh, really be concerned about for this particular render is the image format, the name number dot extension, that's extremely important, and then make sure your start frame and end frame, renderable camera, which camera you want to render it from, and then everything else should be good, and then if you want to add lighting, just create, create, and that'll just give you an outdoor based lighting. So now what I've got, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger is this bouncing ball. Um, other things to keep in mind is uh, under view, camera settings, resolution gate, that'll show you your resolution. And it's always a good idea to um, run a quick render just so you can see what it'll look like. Something like that, okay and just like a quick test render, you know. Um, so just, what, uh, what else I'm gonna do is just test it one more time. Make sure it's a camera view that you like. And you wanna just make sure you get it from a point that you want it from. So this way um, it will play back nicely. So then you can go ahead and make sure you check it here. And that's fine for what I'm doing this for. So I like that, I'm gonna go with that, and I'm gonna hit um, File. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my project. What setting your project does, this is extremely important, is I'm gonna create a new folder and call this Render. By setting a project folder and then uh, double click on it, and click Set, and I'm gonna hit Create Default Workspace. What this does is it uh, allows the software to know where your project files are being saved, but also it creates render files for you as well. So now if I go to render and I do a batch render, it's going to say result rendering with mental ray. While it's doing that, I'm going to let that export and then I'm going to open up Premiere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image sequence once it's done rendering, 
I'm going to bring it into Premiere. New project. Browse. And I'm just going to set my project folder. And you'll see, just when I set my project folder, I have now a workspace.mel, I have images and render data. So it just creates that automatically. It's still rendering out. And I'm going to set this as my project file for my Premiere file. Um, everything should be pretty much fine. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'm just going to wait for this to finish batch rendering. It's only got about eight more, seven more images. So just a few more moments on that. And five more images. So it's just a 20 frame animation. Um, another moment and you'll see it tells you the percentage of rendering done and this is the last one and then it'll say render complete or something like that rendering complete see console for more information which is here um, so that's everything that you've done so far here now I'm gonna go into here into Premiere file import and it's going to be under images I imported the entire folder I mean I that's totally fine too I could do that but and there it is or click on the very first one and make sure you click image sequence you got to have that checked so um, I just re I accidentally imported the entire folder I wanted to redo that simply because I didn't check the settings in here so I want to select the very first image make sure I click image sequence and click import now the other thing if you see I scrub through I have my bouncing ball right here but I'm gonna right click on here modify interpret footage and I want to make sure that it's playing at uh, the correct frame rate. So 29.97 uh, usually right. I'm gonna do a 24 frames per second. And I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna click this on here and drag it on. And you'll see now I have my animation. So if I hit play, there it goes. It plays. File from here we're gonna do file export export media. I'm going to save it to my render folder and call it bouncing ball. Click save. I'm going to make sure I change this to QuickTime format. And should be good. All right. Uh, you could always set use maximum render quality and things like that. For this, I'm not going to need it, but make sure your codex H264. Everything else should be fine. And I'm going to go ahead and click. I don't need to export audio um, because I have no audio. And uh, export. Now, in my finder, if I go to my render folder, bouncingball.mov, and if I set it to a loop, a loop. I've got this little bouncing ball cycling through. So um, that's how you go about exporting an image sequence from Maya. Then you got to bring it into Premiere and um, export it from there as a QuickTime. So you import the image sequence into some type of video editing software and then export it out as a, a, a movie sequence, either AVI or QuickTime format. Uh, or mp4 or whatever so that's how you go about doing that and here's my little bouncing ball animation exported out of Maya uh, as an image sequence imported into Premiere and then exported out from Premiere into a QuickTime format and you get this cool little animation so um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time